At 70 years of age, Edward P. Horvath devotedly wears the titles of son, husband, and father. He has honorably earned the designation of a physician, as well as commander in the United States Navy and colonel in the United States Army. Service stints separated by a time span of 23 years and defined by three combat deployments. He is respected and sought after as a mentor to at-risk young men and as a motivational speaker related to his combat and life experiences. Horvath consistently credits his strength of character and personal and professional achievements to the close bond he shared with his father, calling him his hero. It is a father-son bond that has transcended Horvath generations, as Ed explains in telling the impact of his son's decisions to enlist in the service and fight in Iraq. Shortly after I spoke to my sons and told them that I expected them to do their duty, and they asked me what I had, what, what I recommend in terms of a service, and I told them that I was in the Navy and it was okay. So they ran off and joined the Navy. Both their Navy officers, now one's a pilot and one's uh, in public affairs. Both have been deployed multiple times overseas. Later on in my office, it just came to me. I'm not letting my sons do this alone. I need to give them the continuing example of a father, as my father did for me, and they need doctors. I initially tried to go back in the Navy, and they said, oh, well, you had a neck injury when you were younger, which I did, but it was, it was completely recovered. But I couldn't get them to acknowledge the fact that I was perfectly well. So one of my friends, actually my barber, said, why don't you call the Army? Well, I'm thinking, my dad said, don't go into the Army, <laughs> but I did. And within eight weeks, I was holding my hand up in my office at the Veterans Hospital, taking the oath of office for the second time in my life. You referenced your wife earlier. Mm -hmm. You've been a respected doctor and, as you expressed before, created a life of privilege for your family in that, in that realm. And then you come home and tell her, honey, I'm going back in the service. I'm signing up again. Oh, you should have been here that day. <laughs> she, she shrieked. What are you doing? You've, I said, well, the boys are going in. I want to set a good example. You've already set them a good example. On and on it went, you know, they, they need doctors. Well, let someone else do it. You already did it once. And I really couldn't move her from this opposition. And she couldn't move you either, apparently? No, and she, she actually fi offered to make me two martinis instead of one because she thought I was having a midlife crisis. And finally, I, I, I realized I, I could always disarm my wife with humor. So she said, why are you really doing this? And I said, honey, this is the most fun an old guy like me can have without having an affair. And she looked at me, she said, go down there and tomorrow and sign up. <laughs> so I did. When you finished in the Navy, what was your title? My rank was Lieutenant Commander, which is equivalent to the Army rank of Major. And when, so when you went into the Army, were you busted down or was this, were you, was it a, a transfer? No, actually I got a promotion. Since I had been out 23 years and had experience in corporate America, the Cleveland Clinic had written extensively, had been in administrative managerial positions, I requested one officer rank up, which in the Army would be lieutenant colonel, and they brought me back in as lieutenant colonel. Five year, years after that, I was promoted to full colonel. That sounds like a lot of hardware. <laughs> it's a lot of hard work. <laughs> <laughs> you referenced the Cleveland Clinic. Did you practice out of the Cleveland Clinic? Yes. Uh, I practiced at the Cleveland Clinic for seven years in the Department of Internal Medicine from the year 1993 to 2000. Do you do anything that isn't at the utmost achievement level? Apparently not, although <laughs> I'm not a professional athlete, so you no one would ever mistake me for that. <laughs> but in the things that you choose to undertake, do you, set, do you set that bar for yourself, or is it just the way it evolves? Like, is there something about you that's driven that way? I think there is something about me uh, deep inside that's driven that way. I think part of it came from my father, part of it came from my mother who insisted I get straight A's or else, and part of it is just who I am. And I always wound up, for whatever reason, at the highest level of whatever uh, aspect of medicine I was practicing at that time. Let's go on to how long did you serve in the Army? Almost 11 years. I was honorably discharged on my birthday in August of 2014. Was that your choice? No. I was 68 at the time, 
and naturally I'd had my fill of the Army bureaucracy, which is stifling at times. But if they had offered me an opportunity to stay to age 70, and I knew physicians in Iraq who were 70, I probably would have stayed for two more years. And so why did they not give you the opportunity? Or is that not a question to ask? No, it's a question to ask. I asked it. <laughs> I called Human Resources Command at Fort Knox, and I inquired about staying two more years. And the young major on the phone responded, Sir, we know who you are, what you've done, and if there's anyone we would keep for two more years until age 70, it would be you. But we can't get rid of people fast enough. And I asked the major on the phone, Major, given the world situation, do you think that's a wise idea? And he said, Sir, I can't discuss politics on the phone. <laughs> so we do this after every war. At, right before World War II, the United States Army was smaller than that of Romania's. So we're never ready for the next war, never. And unfortunately, as Plato once said, only the dead have seen the end of war. When they decided that it was time for you to be honorably discharged, what was the hardest thing about that for you, about stepping away from that military world entirely? Or have you not? Well, I have. I'm, not, uh, yeah, I'm a veteran, and I still put my uniform on for military occasions. But um, I think the hardest thing was you become what you do. And I have many personas, husband, father, physician, soldier. And when you lose one of those personas, a part of you dies. And you have to mourn that loss. And it takes time. And then you move on. Did you know that when you left? Yes, I knew. Uh, How well, did you know? I, I, I thought about these things before, and I'd seen it happen in other people. I, I saw what happened to my physician colleagues who retired from medicine. Okay. Part of them died. And I cried. I hung my uniform up the last time. And it's been two years now? Not oh, quite? Not quite a year and a half. What's been the biggest adjustment for you? Biggest adjustment, I think, is not being part of the military anymore. I, I, I don't have that drill weekend to interact with soldiers in uniform. I don't have the, the obligations. I don't have any military activity going on at all after all these years. Some people might be happy to have that chunk of time back at the age of 70. I'm, I'm trying to make good, good use of it. As you know, I'm writing a book on my service in Iraq but I still wish some days that I could go back. Is it the community? Is it the sense of brotherhood? There is a sense of community and a sense of brotherhood and sisterhood. It's a very tight bond, especially if you're in a war. You have a battle buddy. I had a battle buddy. He was the chief nurse, a male. And we looked out for each other. Uh, he was a smoker, interestingly enough, and you couldn't smoke inside the compound. So he had to go outside the T-walls, which are the big concrete walls to smoke, exposing himself to mortar fire. When I saw him walk past my, we call them shoes, they're basically containers, metal containers where I lived, I would walk out with him. I'd grab my uh, 9mm handgun and walk outside the wall. And he said, what are you doing out here? I said, you're my battle buddy. I have to watch out for you. And I stayed with him until he had his couple of cigarettes and went back in together. And that's very characteristic of the military. Not just you? No, you look out for each other.